Here we are in 2020 looking at the newest 16-inch MacBook Pro with the i7 processor versus a five-year-old 2015 MacBook Pro 15-inch. If you're a photographer, graphic designer, video editor, you definitely gonna wanna check out this video because I'm excited to walk through this head-to-head -head comparison coming at you right now. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for graphic designers and creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Also, if you're curious about the exact pricing or specs of either of these models, you can head down into the description below, click one of those links. If you do use that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and is helpful content coming your way. Well, here we are, the head-to-head -head comparison against an older laptop and a newer MacBook Pro. I'm really excited about this video. I did this comparison with a 15-inch uh, versus a 15-inch, and it got a ton of excitement. And so I was really excited to compare the newest model to the 2015 model. The first thing I want to dive into is the Scissor Switch keyboard. Now that they've brought it back, this puts these laptops at a more even playing field as far as comparing them from a user experience standpoint. There's going to be a little bit more key travel in the 2015 model versus the latest 16 inch, but those Scissor Switch keyboards are pretty similar. One thing I like is the absence of the touch bar. Um, I have all my standard keys that I can touch up at the top of the keyboard uh, versus that touch bar that just is kind of annoying and I, I just I don't really like it. We're just going to say that. The next thing is the speakers on the side of the laptop. The speakers on the new MacBook Pro 16 are phenomenal. I'm, I'm not even joking. They're really good. They have great sound quality. It gives you this surround sound experience. It's pretty incredible. All right, now let's talk about the screen. The screen on the new 16 inch MacBook Pro is indeed 16 inches, but the screen on the older MacBook Pro is 15.4 inches. So you're actually only getting about a half inch more of screen with the new 16 inch model. So 16 inch versus 15 inch, it actually isn't that much more. However, the new screen has a little bit more clarity as it is a newer version of the Retina screen. They're both gonna be DCI P3 100% color accurate, um, but it doesn't get that much bigger. That's really the interesting thing. The trackpad. The trackpad on the newer MacBook Pro has better touch sensitivity. I notice a lot when I'm clicking and dragging and dropping with uh, files and things, it just catches those little nuances a little bit better. Um, the older trackpad gives me uh, some annoyances here and there when I'm dragging and dropping files, or maybe when I'm like clicking and dragging uh, when I'm doing photo editing or when I'm having the pen tool in Illustrator, kind of like clicking and moving the pen around. I notice that it kind of can be a little finicky compared to the new one. If I didn't, you know, if I didn't have the new one, I wouldn't notice that comparison, but comparing the 2015 to the 2000, but, but comparing the 2015 model to this new 16 inch, I can notice that the new 16 inch trackpad is a little bit more sensitive. And also it's just a heck of a lot bigger if you notice that. The newer 16 inch is gonna be slightly thinner, but they're both gonna have that really solid aluminum build. The new 16 inch model is gonna be a little bit thinner and slightly lighter, weighs in at about 4.1 pounds, whereas the older MacBook Pro is about 4.6 pounds. So it's not that much lighter, but it is a little bit. The ports, okay, of course they've removed most of the ports on the side of the laptop, and I know a lot of people are not happy about that decision. Um, this laptop I have here has two display ports, an HDMI slot, um, it has, uh, USB, it has a headphone jack, it has an SD card slot, it's got basically everything I need. Whereas the new MacBook Pro has four Thunderbolt ports and it has a headphone jack. Now, one thing that I was not a big fan of is this whole dongle solution. That was until somebody educated me of the fact that you can actually use a dongle to plug into one of the ports and you can take your charger, plug it into the dongle, and now your dongle has become a hub on which it the charger goes into. And so, you know, in the past where I thought, you know, I'd have one for my charger, I'd have one for my dongle, and then I'd plug in a few things over here and then I'd be out of ports. I'm getting more aligned with the idea that the dongle life could be good. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's the right answer. I think it's their put way to push us towards a cloud-based life. Not super stoked about the cloud-based life. I still like to have a lot of my data and a lot of my design projects on my own machine and on my own hard drives. So that really is up to conspiracy theory as well as your own personal workflow. I find that I get more performance out of having information, data, files on my own hard drives than I do when they're up in the cloud. It's just not as efficient of a workflow. 
nonetheless, Mac is moving us that way. If you're curious about other laptops that I recommend, you can jump onto the channel. I just posted my latest 2020 best laptops for designers. You can check that out and see where my heart is going out to new laptops that I would recommend. But the Mac OS is like no other. It is really a fine-tuned piece of software that just makes your user experience very simple, very clean. So it's hard to beat. It's very hard to beat. Next, let's jump into some head-to-head -head tests to see how much more performance you're actually going to get out of the latest MacBook Pro. Can you still buy a MacBook Pro in 2020 that is five years old and still get really solid performance out of it as a video editor or graphic designer? So what we're going to do is take a nine-minute 4K clip, put it into Premiere Pro, and export it out at full quality 4K YouTube settings. The 16-inch MacBook Pro can do this in five minutes and 41 seconds, and the 2015 MacBook Pro can do this in 36 minutes and 25 seconds. So that 4K file takes a lot of processing power in order to export it out of the 15 inch MacBook Pro. Now I've heard people say, well, I mean, it's not a big deal. It's only 30 minutes. You can go do some other tasks. You can design a thumbnail, um, but that is a big chunk of time. And, uh, but if you're okay waiting that long, it saves you a lot of money. Next, let's say we want to save some time and export out this clip from 4K to 1080p. The 16-inch MacBook Pro can do that in 1 minute and 39 seconds, whereas the 2015 MacBook Pro can do that in 5 minutes and 45 seconds. So for some reason, they're substantially faster exporting out to 1080p rather than straight to 4K. It's far less of a difference there when going to 1080p. So if you want to save some time, don't export out as high a quality, and then they get pretty close in those export times. Next, I take a raw photo file, put it into Photoshop, boost it up to 2 gigs, and save it out. The 16-inch MacBook Pro does this in 10 seconds, and the 2015 MacBook Pro does this in 14 seconds. So as far as graphic design tasks are concerned, you don't see a lot of huge differences between these two laptops. It's really when you get into video editing, motion design, or when you have like multiple graphic design programs open at the same time that you really start to see these performance differences. So buying a 2015 MacBook Pro in 2020 really is a solid idea if you're a graphic designer. But if you're going to be getting into video editing, I encourage people to get the newer MacBook Pros. Now, so we know like the specs, so what specs did I run comparing these two models? The specs on the 16-inch MacBook Pro was the Intel 9th Gen 6-core i7-9750H processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the AMD Radeon Pro 5300M graphics processing unit, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, whereas the 2015 MacBook Pro had a 2.2 gigahertz Intel i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the Intel Iris Pro graphics processing, which is the integrated graphics processing and one terabyte of solid state hard drive. So you can see that older i7 processor is a good bit slower and it doesn't have a dedicated GPU. All right, so definitely drop your comments in the description below. I'm super curious what y'all think of this head-to-head -head comparison. Definitely love to respond to the comments. It's where I'm most active on any social platform. I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you here on the next one.